Let's take our Bibles to Matthew chapter number seven this morning. And uh, like I said, there's just so much profound information here for the believer in Matthew chapter number seven. And so we're going to drop in where we left off yesterday. We talked about uh, the fruit that comes for our, from our lives reveals who we really are. Well, something else that we need to understand is Jesus knows that you can claim really anything you want, but Jesus knows his own. He knows the truth. And so... Uh, that's something that should actually give us pause, if anything at all. And uh, verse number 21 is where it begins. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Listen to this next phrase. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And so he gives the qualification immediately. Not those that are doing their own will, not those that are living their own way, not those that have a claim that they are God's people, but they just simply do not have any resources to allocate to anything that God is doing. Those are not the people that are genuinely God's people. And he knows the difference. Like I said, that should give us pause because we have to decide, am I after God's will or am I after my will? Am I after what he wants done or am I doing what I want done? And so he goes on and he says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. So, so it's not the fact that people aren't kind, the fact that people aren't generous. It's it, Some of these things are universally human possibilities. But he says... In verse number 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so there's this really serious possibility that we will do enough good things in our lives to convince ourselves that we are God's child, but we won't do enough good things to, or do the right good things, if that makes sense, especially the one good thing which is truly surrender our lives to him. Jesus tells us that if we'll take up our cross and follow him, that's when we actually become one of his, his disciples. And so I wonder if there isn't a correlation between those that uh, not only claim to be a believer, not only do God things, so to speak, and the person who genuinely loves the Lord and prioritizes him as the centerpiece of their lives. And so that's the question. Is the Lord the centerpiece of your life? Because I think that most people today that are claiming that Jesus is their Savior have never really surrendered to him. They just heard a message and they said, well, that makes sense. I don't want to go to hell, so give me that. Uh, but it's not really a loving relationship with God. It's not really a true surrender because of what God has done. And so I want to encourage you today, do some self-evaluation. Ask yourself, am I really a follower of God? Am I really doing God's things or am I just doing my things while claiming to love him? Like I said, Jesus reveals that he knows the difference and what he determines is true. And so let's use this passage today to do a little a reflection on self. Am I truly a follower of God? Am I truly a doer of the work of the Lord? Or am I just a person who claims to? Have a great day.